To learn to visualize auxiliary views, imagine an auxiliary viewing plane. This plane should be oriented parallel to the inclined surface to be drawn and perpendicular to the frontal viewing plane. From this perspective, the print reader will be looking at the edge of the imaginary viewing plane, so it will look like a line. Next, mentally rotate the object 90 degrees about this line, which represents the edge view of the auxiliary viewing plane. It will probably help to imagine the lines of projection perpendicular to the inclined plane extending from the inclined surface to the auxiliary viewing plane. In this example, we have projected the auxiliary view off of the front view because the inclined plane appears as a line in the front view. This is an important point regarding auxiliary views drawn for the purpose of showing an inclined surface in true size and shape. The drafter will start with a view in which the inclined surface appears as a line because the inclined surface is perpendicular to that view. Some people find it easier to visualize the auxiliary viewing plane swinging around as if there is a hinge where the imaginary frontal and auxiliary viewing planes meet. As the auxiliary viewing plane rotates, it carries the auxiliary view along with it. Either method of visualizing the auxiliary view will yield the same result. Most auxiliary views will be projected from one of the six principal views. These auxiliary views are also aligned with the principal view they are projected from, and are called primary auxiliary views. Here, for example, the auxiliary view has been projected from the front view, and it is drawn aligned with that view. So this auxiliary view is a primary auxiliary view. Primary auxiliary views are usually not labeled. It is expected that the print reader can interpret the view based only on its location and orthographic relationship to the principal or regular views. Occasionally, a primary auxiliary view may be moved out of projection in order to save space on the print. In this case, a viewing plane line should be used and the auxiliary view should remain oriented to agree with the associated viewing plane line. Also, the auxiliary view must be labeled appropriately so that it can be easily identified and associated with the viewing plane line. The auxiliary view may be drawn on a separate sheet of the drawing. This requires a note directing the reader to the sheet where the primary auxiliary view is located. As noted previously in this unit, a primary auxiliary view can be drawn to show an inclined surface in true size and shape. If an inclined surface has features that must be dimensioned, then they should be dimensioned in a view that shows that surface in true size and shape. This requires an auxiliary view to be drawn on the print. The part in this print, for example, has an inclined surface. This surface is perpendicular to the frontal viewing plane, so in the front view it appears as a line which represents the edge of the inclined surface. In the right side view, the inclined surface appears foreshortened since this surface is inclined to the profile viewing plane. But the inclined surface includes two holes that must be dimensioned. A primary auxiliary view can be projected from the front view to show the inclined surface in true size and shape. This primary auxiliary view is where the circles should be dimensioned. Another type of auxiliary view is called a secondary auxiliary view. It is used to show an oblique surface in true size and shape. A secondary auxiliary view is projected from a primary auxiliary view. Here is an object that includes an oblique surface. Since this surface is not parallel to any of the principal viewing planes, it will not show true size and shape in any of the six principal views. Furthermore, since the surface is not perpendicular to any of the viewing planes, it will also not be seen as a line in any of the principal views. To create an auxiliary view that shows the oblique surface in true size and shape will require two steps. First, a primary auxiliary view must be drawn in projection with one of the principal views. In this example, the primary auxiliary view is projected from the top view. This primary auxiliary view must be oriented such that the oblique surface appears as a line in this view. This view can be visualized by rotating the top view both forward and up to the right, as shown here. The result is a primary auxiliary view in which the oblique surface is viewed from the edge so it looks like a line. Now, a secondary auxiliary view must be drawn in projection with the primary auxiliary view. It is this secondary auxiliary view that will show the oblique surface in true size and shape. 
This process can be visualized by mentally rotating the primary auxiliary view 90 degrees down and toward the front of the print. The result is a secondary auxiliary view in which the oblique surface appears in true size and shape. Some sources use additional terms when referring to auxiliary views. For example, in this print, we already know that the auxiliary view is classified as a primary auxiliary view because it is projected from one of the six principal views. But you may also notice that this view includes a short break line, meaning that part of the drawing has been left off since the purpose of this primary auxiliary view is only to show the inclined surface in true size and shape. As learned in a previous unit, this view could also be called a partial auxiliary view, or even a partial primary auxiliary view. Primary auxiliary views are sometimes defined on the basis of the dimension that is missing in the principal view the auxiliary view is projected from. For example, assuming that the regular view in the lower left is the front view, this auxiliary view could be referred to as a depth auxiliary view. This is because the front view does not show the depth of an object, but the auxiliary view projected from the front view is rotated 90 degrees and therefore shows the depth dimension of the object. In other words, the depth dimension is missing from the front view, but will be shown in any view that is rotated 90 degrees from the front view. If the two regular views had been defined and drawn in a different arrangement, so that the view on the lower left is the front view, and the view on the right is the right side view, then the primary auxiliary view shown is projected from the right side view. In this case, the primary auxiliary view could be referred to as a width auxiliary view. This is because the right side view does not show the width dimension, but any view that is rotated 90 degrees from the right side view will show the object's width. Lastly, suppose the views are defined so that the one regular view shown here is the top view. Height information is missing from the top view, so it will be shown in any view drawn rotated 90 degrees from the top view. So if the primary auxiliary view is projected from the top view, it will feature the height dimension and can be called a height auxiliary view.